Howdy gang, good to see you back again. Of course, for those of you tuning in for the first time, I am the Articulate Grunt. Welcome to my channel. Hope you enjoy my relaxed holiday fuzz while we get down to business. Now, Newtown and Sandy Hook. I was not going to touch it. I'm going to do a thing about it. Just ignore it and let it go. But, as I said, my subscribers send me requests and questions. I will do my best to answer it. And I've had about four asking where I stand, what I think, and one in particular asking what my biggest pet peeve with the whole thing is. So, I'm not only going to answer that today, but hopefully start a new series for you. Now, my biggest pet peeve, my biggest problem whenever we have one of these is the media. Anytime something like this happens, they drop everything they're doing. Everything that's going on, all the other coverage gets dropped to create a new reality star. Whoever the perpetrator is, they get their picture, old photos, family, friends, whatever they can get hold of. Their entire history, whether they're just a pathetic loser or a mental case, and put it all over everything for everyone to see, and basically turn them into reality star. Which creates a little problem. Because now, the next poor pathetic piece of trash, or the next mental case that would have faded into nothingness, or done away with themselves quietly in their mother's basement, looks at it and goes, oh, I could be famous. I could be the next one. Nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Nobody even knows my name. My parents wish I weren't born. But everybody will know me. Everybody will know my name. Everybody will remember what I look like. I'll be famous. I might be dead, but I'll never be forgotten. I'll be famous. Everyone will know me. And there's the problem. The media puts it out there in such a way they can use it to sell whatever agenda they want and put them up bigger than life. When what we should be doing is rubbing them out of existence. Making sure everybody knows what happens, but just assign them up the perpetrator a gunman. A generic term. And don't use their photo. Nobody sees their face. Nobody knows what they look like. Nobody knows anything about them. They were irrelevant. You might know, you know, maybe put out that they had a history of mental disorder. Or they were a loner. No one really knew them very well. And leave it at that. Instead, focus on the victims and the heroes those that were involved in doing the right thing, those who saved lives. And in the day-to-day -day world around us, put forth those who prevent such things from happening, or head them off early on minimizing the casualties and damage. And that's what I'm going to do today. I set myself a challenge. I said 10 minutes. I'm going to go online for 10 minutes, no more, and see how many cases I can find of individuals interceding and stopping gunmen. Then I'm going to give myself 10 minutes per incident I can find to vet them, to research them and figure out whether they're real, fake, and what they were actually like. If I can vet them in 10 minutes, the, okay, this was real. This was real. This is what happened. I'm putting it on here today. If I couldn't, I set it to the side for further detailed research. So let's get down to it. And yes, before you ask, I've got a note sheet on my computer, so if I look to be glancing away, I'm making sure I don't screw up names, dates, locations, things such as that. But let's get to the heroes. On the 16th of December this year, yes, two days after the Newtown shooting, Sergeant Lisa Castellano of Bexar County, Texas, was working her off-duty job, her second job, as security at a local movie theater, when she witnessed a young male run into the theater with a handgun. She moved, intercepted him, drew a personally owned handgun, for which she's got a separate concealed carry permit for, and gave him one instance, one warning, to surrender and put down his weapon. He refused. She fired one shot, disarming and disabling him, and was quickly assisted by a off-duty officer who was there with his family to see the movies in securing him and cuffing him so that on-duty officers could show up and take him away. Nobody was shot, nobody was killed, except for the perpetrator. She was actually honored on the 19th of December by her local county with a local award. Now the thing of this instance not, isn't only that she actually 
intervened and took the fellow down. But it kind of struck me as stupid that the mainstream media didn't take advantage of it. She was, an, she was actually an off-duty police officer carrying a private weapon with a civilian concealed carry, working a second job, but an off-duty police officer all the same. Let's move on. In 1997, Vice Principal Joel Merrick apprehended a student at his high school. Hearing shots, he ran out to his truck, retrieved and loaded his 45 cal caliber revolver, and ran back to the sounds of gunfire. By the time Mr. Merrick responded and got back, the shooter had already killed his ex-girlfriend and the ex-girlfriend's best friend, another young lady, age 17, and had wounded seven other students. The vice principal ran up the gun to the side of the perpetrator's head, asked what he was doing, and he immediately surrendered. He didn't try fighting, he didn't try dodging, he was done. He surrendered, he stopped his shooting, dropped his weapon, and is now serving three consecutive life terms. Now, in 1998, Mr. James Strawn was catering a high school dance off campus, but a high school sponsored and run dance when he heard shots. He ran back out to his truck, retrieving a shotgun. He returned to the dance, confronting the armed shooter, who was a student attending the dance, who had already shot and killed one teacher, a veteran of the educational system who had been teaching students for 22 years, and had also wounded seven additional classmates. When confronted with an armed opponent, the shooter immediately surrendered and dropped his handgun, and is now serving a life sentence for the murder of the teacher, plus the wounding of several fellow students. He did, by the way, leave a suicide note on his pillow at home before attending the dance. In 2002, a failed law student of the Appalachian School of Law shot two professors and a fellow student before being subdued by Michael Gross and Tracy Bridges, two fellow students who, having heard gunshots, ran to their vehicles and retrieved illegally owned and licensed under concealed carry permits personal handguns. Returned and confronted the shooter along with a third student, Ted Bisson, an unarmed fellow student, but a former Marine. The shooter once again surrendered when confronted with armed opposition and pled guilty to avoid the death penalty and is now serving three consecutive life sentences. Media at the time cited Mr. Bisson with the takedown and capture, failing to report at all the presence of two armed students having been present and assisted. In 2005, Mr. Mark Wilson, having a concealed carry permit and a legally purchased and carried handgun, engaged a shooter in Tyler, Texas, who had shot and killed his ex-wife and wounded his own son, before beginning to fire wildly, wounding three other individuals. Mr. Wilson engaged and drew the shooter's fire away from anyone else. Unfortunately, while Mr. Wilson was accurate, putting several rounds into the shooter, the shooter was wearing body armor, who returned fire back to Mr. Wilson, fatally wounding him. The engagement, however, did drive the shooter out of the area. He got in his vehicle and fled north, was pursued by police, and killed when the police brought his vehicle to a stop, and thus had an ensuing gunfight when he refused to surrender. Now, in 2007, Miss Jean Assam of Colorado Springs engaged and wounded a shooter who entered her church, shooting and killing two people while wounding three others. She was carrying a legally purchased known handgun with a concealed carry permit that the church knew of and had given her permission. The pastor didn't mind and had given his approval. Though she only wounded the shooter, he refused to surrender and wound up actually taking his own life rather than be captured. Upon further investigation by the police later on, it turned out that his weapon was used the day before, actually around midnight the night before, in a town about 70 miles away, resulting in two additional deaths and two wounded individuals at a Youth with a Mission training center. In 2012, Antonio Melo was leaving church services in Aurora, Colorado. Yes, this year at an a familiar sounding location, just down the street as it turns out, when a recently released felon walked into the church parking lot and shot dead a registered nurse and mother of the pastor. As the felon turned towards other, other screaming and fleeing churchgoers, Mr. Melo drew his legally owned and carried handgun and shot the felon dead at the scene, stopping any further deaths or injuries instantly. Now, in another semi-media blackout that you may have heard of, but didn't know they were leaving facts out of, just the week prior to the Newtown shootings, the news had had some minor domination of a shooter in a mall in Oregon who had killed two people and wounded a third before taking his own life. The police got great pass on the shoulder, which they deserved for responding quickly, getting into the mall and finding the shooter, who was already dead when they found him. As it turns out, according to witness statements, and Mr. Nick Malai himself, Mr. Nick Malai was at the mall with his girlfriend when the shooter started shooting. Mr. Malai has a concealed carry permit and a legally purchased and owned sidearm. 
he drew his weapon and moved to engage the shooter, giving him a warning to put down his weapon. The shooter then retreated into a nearby store and took his own life, which is where police found him. Mr. Malai, however, is not mentioned in any of the media reports. And finally, one last hero. As I said, I gave myself 10 minutes, that was it, to find instances on the internet, and then 10 minutes per incident to research them and see if they were true or not. Those I couldn't vet and know were true and validated, I left off and I may read to you another time. But as I was saying, one last hero, and one we should not forget. It was Victoria Soto, age 27, of Newtown. First grade teacher who hid her students in cabinets and closets and told the gunman that they were in the gym. He shot her dead, but none of her students were wounded or injured. He didn't even know they were there. Masato is one of those heroes we need to remember and glorify, not the shooters. Why is it important to erase the shooters, to make them unknown to the public? In five days following up after the Newtown shootings, there were already three arrests, one in California, Colorado, and Tennessee of teenagers, in one case saying it was a prank call, but calling in or making statements that they could do better, they could have a lot higher body count, and that maybe that was something they should do. The one that made the prank call obviously got caught to his own actions. The other two were turned in by others. That's why we need to glorify the heroes, not the shooters, not the pieces of shit that commit the crimes, the heroes that stop them and those who sacrifice their own lives to protect others. These are the people we need to plaster all over the news. These are the ones we need to remember and to know in the future and to teach our children about. Well, I'm sorry the vids run so long. Hopefully it's been informative. You found something that was of use to you. Leave me your comments down below to let me know what you think. Or if you've got any questions, hit the like or dislike. And take care of yourselves. Keep your heads down until I catch you next time. I am the Articulate Grunt. I'll see you then. Bye.